Hello. This is my April 2023 report on the electrical systems at our property in Huntingdonshire in England. Here's an outline view of the major components of the system, and you can find further details of these in the blurb below the video. This first graph shows the daily electrical energy coming into the property from the two solar arrays and from the grid. These figures come from the daily readings of the two solar generation meters and the not smart electricity meter. The total production this month was 760 units, an average of 25.3 units per day. The lowest production was 6.7 units on the 1st and the highest was 39.3 on the 25th. 226 grid units were imported in total with just two at normal rate and the rest at economy 7 low rate. The second storage heater was turned off on the 21st, leading to very little grid import after that date, apart from some car charging in the early hours of the 28th. The April the 1st adjustments to our variable EDF Economy 7 tariff electricity prices saw the cost of low units go up from 7 to 8.59 pence, a rise of more than 22%. The normal rate units did come down from 54.47 pence to 50.6 pence, but that hardly affects us as we hope not to use more than a couple each month. The daily standing charge has jumped from 39.02 pence to 43.76 pence, a rise of a bit more than 12%. A rather large 112 units were exported to the grid, according to the Tesla app which is 11.4% of the total electrical energy coming in and 14.7% of the solar energy produced. Yes, John, we were away on holiday again for the first week of the month and on childbinding duties on the 25th. The solar contribution to the month's electricity input was 77.1%. This second graph shows where the electrical energy consumed by the property and the car came from. The figures behind this graph are mostly supplied by the Tesla app and the My Energy app gives us the car's home charging figures. 41.6% of the energy came directly from solar and a further 31.4% was solar coming via the power wall, giving a total solar contribution to the energy used of 73%. The Zappi charger put 170.1 solar units into the car and a small boost of 10 low-rate grid units were used as well. We also had the benefit of around 57 cost-free units at the destination charger used in the first week of the month. The 504.3 miles driven in April cost 0 0.17 pence per mile. This graph shows the work being done by the Powerwall, the energy going in and coming out each day as reported by the Tesla app. 87.8% of the energy which went into the battery came back out, steadily rising from the lowly 42% which was being displayed after the first of the month. This is the self-power graph based on figures from the Tesla app which reported that the proportion of self-power during the month was 74.6%. It's been near 100% since the storage heater in the annex was turned off, apart from the 28th when the grid energy was put into the car. This graph shows the Solar Southwest production over the years since installation. 407 units was the seventh best April over the 12 years and the worst in the most recent five years, slightly above the April arithmetic mean of 399.6 and close to the median of 407.5. Here's the cumulative year-to-date graph for the Southwest array. 2023 has dropped one more place from eighth to ninth place out of the 12 years. This graph shows the daily output of the two solar arrays for the past 365 days. After the March hiatus, the moving average lines have resumed their climb. This is the distribution of the energy input and export, similar to the first graph, but for the whole of the past year. And this graph shows just the daily solar production for that period. Looking at the variability from day to day, it becomes obvious why the Tesla guessing system of what to do with the power wall when in time-based control cannot be optimal, because it does not use any form of day-to-day -day forecast. Then again, some forecasts are more helpful than others, and the BBC weather app isn't one of them. If you just glance at the summary icon for this day, you might think that you are in for a dull and wet day. Looking at the hour-by-hour -hour predictions, however, things look very different. 
there are lots of better ways to get your local forecast for the day. This final graph shows a summary of our grid electricity usage over the years since our move here in the summer of 2011. The grey and red lines show the number of low rate and normal rate grid units used each month as measured on the left hand scale. The monthly electricity bill is shown by the yellow line in the right hand scale and the green line shows the monthly contribution to the feed-in tariff payments for the old Southwest Array's production. The feed-in tariff payment rates have gone up significantly from the 1st of April in line with inflation. I'm waiting to see whether the estimated production figure used by British Gas up to the 1st of April is in their favour for the 12th year running, as they refuse to accept an interim reading from me on the 1st of April. That's all for now. I'll leave you with the Tesla app graphs for each day of April and hope to see you again next month.